Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to pick up with the larynx and the trachea, and we're going to imagine we're inhaling air, and we're going to follow the path of that air all the way down into the microscopic structures that we're going to call alveoli. Okay? And really, once we get past the trachea, we're going to enter the lungs. Okay, so really at this level, which we'll discuss in a minute, the primary bronchi, that's going to be in the lungs. Now, before we go any further, I want to ask you a question. What is the purpose of the respiratory tract? And really, we could say the lungs. What's the purpose, the major function? And even if you haven't talked about this yet, you've probably hinted at this in ANP1 at some point when you talked about organ systems, and especially in ANP2 when you did the cardiovascular system. The purpose of the respiratory tract is to get oxygen into yourself, into your blood, and to get rid of CO2, carbon dioxide. Gas exchange, right? Oxygen and CO2 are gases. The purpose is gas exchange. In order to exchange gases, you have to have diffusion of those gases. Diffusion. Now, very early in ANP1, I know in my class we talked about this, we talked about factors that affect diffusion rate, and I actually have several videos over that. One of the factors affecting diffusion rate is surface area. If you want to have a high amount of diffusion or a high diffusion rate, one of the best ways is to have a high surface area, particularly a high surface area to volume ratio. Okay? The respiratory pathway, which sometimes we call the respiratory tree because actually as we see it divide more and more, it resembles the branches of a tree, this is really the best exercise in increasing surface area that I can think of in the human body. There are, of course, other things that we see that will increase surface area, like the microvilli on the uh, small intestines, right, in the GI tract. But this is my favorite example of increasing surface area, okay? Because what we're really starting with is we're starting with the larynx and the trachea, which are very large structures. They have a very high volume. But relative to all these little things out here, their surface area is really tiny. Trachea does not have a very big surface area. So what we're going to see in the respiratory tree is that as we go down further and further into each lung, we're going to divide more and more. All these tubes are going to divide more and more and more. And eventually we're going to divide so much and get such a high surface area that the surface area in an average lung is going to be about 70 square meters. And if anyone's familiar with American football, 70 square meters is approximately, it's close enough of an approximation to the surface area of an entire football field. That's impressive just from a tiny little trachea. All right, so let's start with the trachea. We could start with the larynx, but we'll start with the trachea. And we're going to work our way down during an inhalation, so inhaling air, and follow the path of the air and see how it divides. All right. Now, if we start in the trachea or the larynx, we're in an area called the conducting zone. Okay? The conducting zone's only function is to transport air. There is no gas exchange in any of these regions. So this is just conducting the air, moving the air down into actually what we call the respiratory zone, which is where gas exchange occurs. And if we're talking about the larynx and the trachea, we're not in the lungs yet. Okay? What's going to happen at the trachea, I'll actually zoom in a little bit here, at the trachea, it's going down, and the trachea is going to what we call bifurcate. So bifurcation or bifurcate is a fancy term, meaning it's going to divide into two pathways. Okay? One is going to the patient's left over here, other is going to the patient's right. These two divisions, and only these two right here, they are called primary bronchi, and an individual one is called a primary bronchus. Okay? These primary bronchi on each side lead into the corresponding lung. So, of course, the left primary bronchus is going to lead into the left lung, and the right primary bronchus is going to lead into the right lung. Okay? So, let me actually zoom back out here. So, we have, of course, one on each side. Those are our primary bronchi. Now, notice up here, and I've got this figure, which I actually kind of like. I'm actually going to blow this up a little bit for us right now. Um, there's, of course, one trachea, right? When we get to the level of the primary bronchi, which is actually this first region, it divides. It just bifurcates into two tubes. So, of course, now we have two tubes. Now, each primary bronchus is going to divide into two secondary bronchi. 
two secondary bronchi. This one over here on the left, we can see divides one up here, one right here. And so when we look at this, each of these primary bronchi, when they divide again, they're going to get two per each of them. So now there's four total secondary bronchi. Okay? What you're seeing each time here is the number of tubes in each branch is increasing. Right? And of course, there's left and right secondary bronchi. Then the secondary bronchi are going to divide further into what we call tertiary bronchi. So let's take a look at one secondary bronchus. Here's a secondary bronchus right here. This is on the right side. We see here that it's going to divide here. It's going to divide here. These would actually be ter tertiary bronchi. Okay? If we look on this side, here is a secondary bronchus. And of course, it's going to divide. Here's a tertiary bronchus. Here's a tertiary bronchus. And so overall, what we see is that, again, you're going to increase the number of bronchi, the tertiary bronchi, to eight. Okay. And so while it's not really as important to know these numbers right here, because they get very out of control really quickly, and these are more or less just approximations at the bottom, what's important to see is that the number of tubes in each branch is increasing with each division. So we have approximately double the number of tertiary bronchi that we had secondary bronchi. We, of course, have approximately double the number of secondary bronchi that we have primary bronchi, and so on and so forth. So hopefully this makes sense, even though you don't need to know the exact numbers generally. All right, so tertiary bronchi on each side are going to divide even further. And now we're starting to get into pretty small structures. Okay? Once we get past the tertiary bronchi, they're no longer called bronchi. They're actually what we call bronchioles. Okay? It turns out that bronchioles are actually the type of tubes in the respiratory pathway that can be regulated for their diameter. So for example, you can actually constrict bronchioles and you can dilate bronchioles. And depending on what kind of state you're in, let's say you're in a fight or flight situation, you would actually have dilated bronchioles. If you're just at rest, they'd be a little bit more constricted, but of course not closed. The bronchioles are going to divide even further, and they're going to divide many, many, many times. Okay? This is not just one division of the bronchioles. Um, in fact, what we can see is that we might have, let's say, 16 initial bronchioles, but by the time they finish dividing, because they're going to divide over and over and over again, we're going to have roughly 6 times 10 to the 4th terminal bronchioles. That's about 60,000. 60,000 terminal bronchioles. So the bronchioles divide many, many times over. And then we get very, very, very small microscopic terminal bronchioles. Okay? Now, the terminal bronchioles pretty much mark the end of the conducting zone. Because when the terminal bronchioles divide, we're going to get what are called respiratory bronchioles. Okay? Respiratory bronchioles mark the beginning of the respiratory zone, which is where gas exchange occurs. Okay? So as we go through the respiratory bronchioles, they're going to lead to what we call alveolar ducts. The respiratory bronchioles you could think as being like the opening to what we call an alveolar sac. Let me actually get an image of that so you can see. So right here we have this tubing. Okay? This tube right here, this is actually a respiratory bronchial, or at least the end of a respiratory bronchial. These large sacs right here, this whole thing, this whole thing would be an alveolar sac. Here's another alveolar sac. Here's another alveolar sac. Okay? And within the respiratory bronchial, as you go through it, once it kind of merges into the alveolar sac, it goes through a series of ductworks called alveolar ducts. You can kind of see the alveolar duct labeled here. The alveolar duct really just allows the transport of air from the respiratory bronchial and into the alveolar sac. Now, once you're in that alveolar sac, the individual microscopic functional unit are the individual alveoli. So the singular would be alveolus. So this little kind of little part right here, this would be one alveolus, this would be one alveolus, this would be another, and collectively the alveoli make up the alveolar sac. Okay. So that respiratory bronchial leads into the alveolar sac by means of the alveolar duct. Okay. So the alveolar duct just leads into the sac, and then once that air is in the sac, it can then interact with the alveoli individually where gas exchange occurs. And it's very important to understand that the region of the lung where gas exchange is specifically occurring is at the alveoli. Okay. 
Very, very important to understand. Now, what I want you to kind of glean from this picture right here, this diagram, is notice we start out with one trachea. Okay, the trachea is right here, of course. Now we can go up to the larynx, but let's just start with the trachea. It's just one tube. And overall, it has a pretty high volume. It's pretty big compared to each of the alveolar sacs, right? It's pretty big. But it has a relatively low surface area. So the trachea has a low surface area to volume ratio. Now, if you go down to the alveolar sacs, look at all these divisions. That leads us to 8 times 10 to the 6th. This is 8 million. So we have roughly 8 million alveolar sacs. That's just the sac, right? Because within each sac, there's actually a plenty of alveoli here, individual alveoli. So actually, this number is a little bit bigger once you account for all the alveoli. But just the sacs, there's about 8 million of those. And they're really small. But you could imagine collectively, they increase the surface area dramatically. So actually, these alveolar sacs compared to the trachea have an astronomically higher surface area to volume ratio. And so this is kind of cool. We start with one large tube with a low surface area, we divide many, 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 many times over, and we increase the surface area, which dramatically increases the diffusion rate for gas exchange. And only if we have this situation can we effectively get oxygen into our blood and get carbon dioxide out of our blood to exhale that as a waste product. And what we're going to be covering in the next videos after this is really the mechanisms by which gas exchange occurs. So we're going to begin with how we actually have ventilation. That's just breathing. Breathing in and out. Like when you go to the doctor's office, they put the stethoscope on your chest or your back and they listen. Okay, they're listening to things and they tell you to inhale and exhale. That's ventilation. And that's actually how we get that air from the larynx down to the alveolar sac. But once we have the air in the alveolar sac, how does that gas exchange occur? We're going to discuss that in a couple of videos. So make sure to join us then. Keep up with this playlist. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.